Hi everyone, welcome to part three of the series of videos I have been making on uh, understanding how to prepare your cargo holds for loading bulk cargos uh, on bulk carrier vessels. So like I said before, these videos and these series of videos will benefit you whether you have been sailing on bulk carriers or not, especially if you are going for any kind of written examinations or oral examinations, because I've been using a lot of pictures that I had access to so that I can uh, explain the text that is written in books through pictures, which will enhance your understanding. Uh, if you see pictures, you remember the knowledge more vividly rather than you reading text and trying to memorize it. In uh, part three and the last video in this topic, I will be talking about drying of the cargo holds and I will be talking about bilge wells, bilge line testing, paint systems, internal water ingress, fumigation requirements, uh, chief officers hold inspection and the reasons why um, marinas fail hold inspections and I will end it with the hold cleaning equipment that is required for preparing the vessel. So that will be what I will be covering today. I hope you watched all the videos. If not, then the links to the previous two parts are in the description section below along with all the other videos in the topic or other in the area of cargo work. So make sure you watch all the videos before you go for any kind of examination. So I'll start with the uh, drying of cargo holes. So when the wash down of the cargo holes is completed, as you must have uh, seen in my last video, the crew should mop up any pools of water that may have collected on tank top indentations and other areas. Now, if the ship is fitted with any kind of mechanical ventilation systems, this should also be used to quicken the drying process for the rest of the hold. Uh, bilge wells must be dry before being shown to the surveyor. Now almost inevitably some ship sweat will form on the internal structure of the hold in the interval between completion of cleaning and the hold inspection. So ship sweat it should itself uh, should not in itself be a reason for holds to fail in inspection. Inspectors or surveyors don't fail you uh, just because your ship has developed some sweat that cannot be avoided. Uh, the inspector may require any excessive quantities of water to be wiped dry during the inspection but after having satisfied himself that the source of the moisture is only ship sweat and not the water that was used for cleaning or any kind of water leakage the surveyor should accept the hold as a clean hold or cargo hold uh, it is customary to cover the bilge well cover strainer plates with burlap and cement around the perimeter or there may be a bolt down system some cargoes such as uh, titanium or chrome ores are contaminated by cement or cement dust. In these cases, the burlap should be positioned using the marine duct tape. Uh, you can also use craft paper for certain cargoes to prevent any kind of dust and silt. One of the most important tasks in hold preparation is to ensure that the bilge wells, the lines and the valves are in a clean and operational condition. The bilge lines must be tested by a competent person under the supervision of the cargo officer, of course to ensure that the non-return valves are functioning correctly and not allowing any flow back of water into the cargo holes. The bilge high level alarms must also be tested and confirmed as operational. Water ingress into the holes when carrying a cargo is a common cause of cargo damage. This can be the result of poor hatch cover integrity or water ingress back through the bilge and ballast systems. So make sure that you check the bilge and ballast adductor systems, non-return valves, check the high level alarms are operational, consider blanking of bilge and ballast lines if washing down empty holes when remaining holes contain water sensitive cargoes, uh, check the integrity of ballast and fuel oil tank manhole lids, uh, check uh, ships with holes that are also used for seawater ballast must have the ballast lines blanked off and tank top manhole lids securely fitted with gaskets in good condition. You can see on your screens on the right side, especially the drawing where you can see an example of how a water ingress has taken place due to a faulty bilge valve, uh, which can cause cargo damage in certain cases. And then high claims, claims of high value can result because of this damage. This is our uh, different drawings that are showing you the bilge system here. Make sure you check that the bilge suction is operational. Anyhow, I'll move on to paints and paint systems. The more glossier the paint, uh, the easier it is to clean. Epoxy coatings appear to be the most common paint used for holes. 
If the hold needs painting, sufficient time should be allowed to cure and dry the paint. Unless advised otherwise by manufacturers, seven days should at least be adequate in a well-ventilated hold. Some cargoes such as processed grains are susceptible to taint from uncured paint. Stains from pet coke are difficult to remove from some types of paints. The coke appears to be burnt into the paint and a second high pressure cleaning with brushing is often required. What you can do is to reduce, you can reduce the impact pressure of the cargo on the sides of the hold when loading, if possible. Use high pressure uh, washings with chemicals, use cherry pickers to give crew direct or closer access to the hold sides. And use cherry pickers only in port. Uh, protect the hold paint before loading with a pre-wash or barrier chemical and check that such chemical is compatible with any foodstuff cargos. Charters and shippers may require the cargo to be fumigated. If this is to be done during the voyage or before or after loading, full and clear instructions should be received from the charters and shippers. These instructions should refer to product data sheets and the correct procedures and safety advice. It should also include application dangers, methods of handling and requirements for personal protective equipment and monitoring equipment. You can also refer to the IMO recommendations on the safe use of pesticides on ships. I have made a separate video on this recommendation. Make sure you carry out a risk assessment before you start applying uh, pesticides or you start doing fumigation. A qualified fumigator should be engaged by the charters when fumigation is to be done in port. All spaces should be padlocked and sealed to prevent anyone from entering the space. No one should enter a space that has been fumigated until after it has been thoroughly ventilated. It is recommended that an expert chemist declares whether the space is safe to enter. If the cargo requires ventilation after fumigation, advice should be sought from fumigation experts in respect to whether it is safe for the crew to enter the cargo hold or not. Time should be available after completing the cargo or rather completing the hold cleaning to repair any damage to the hold fittings and coatings and for paint to cure hard and for paint odors to dissipate after any touch up repairs. When holds are inspected, the master or chief officer should accompany the inspector with two or three crew members bringing brushes, shovels, rags and a bucket so that any minor problems that the inspector finds can be immediately rectified while he or she completes his inspection of that hold. A chief officer should also carry out an inspection. So what should a chief officer's inspection include? Uh, he or she should go down the vertical ladder, stopping to inspect the underside of the upper deck and the hatch end combing as soon as they become visible. Look all around, use a strong torch if necessary to check all horizontal surfaces are clean. Uh, inspect the bulkhead on each, on, on each side of the ladder and the adjacent parts of the ship sides. From the tank top, climb accessible pipe guards and inspect surfaces for residues and rust scales. Check behind frames, pipes and pipe guards. Walk around the sides and ends of the tank top inspecting the bulkheads and ship sides. Walk over the tank top listening for indications of loose rust scale. Um, climb the sloping ladder inspecting all visible surfaces, stop at the top inside the hold uh, to inspect the underside of the upper deck and the hatch and combing, check the insides of any deck houses for grain and insects. Be aware that some crews have been known to collect grain residues in sacks to sell at subsequent ports. Now, storage of that sort will al al almost certainly attract any kind of insects. If insects are found in grain residues, clean the residues as thoroughly as possible, spray the area with a good quality insecticide, uh, just to prevent uh, any kind of insects from occurring there. Uh, be aware that washing a hole will tend to lift hard scales and the effect not being noticeable until the water has dried. So rust scales should not require chipping to remove before a hole is accepted for green. Make sure you open and close the hatch cover several times before starting to clean to shake off any kind of residues and lose rust as much as possible. Pay particular attention to hole number one. This is often the most difficult to clean because of its shape and additional structure members. Uh, most surveyors will start a green survey in that hole and if it passes, less attention is given to the remaining holes. So check bilge wells are dry. So there could be a lot more that I could talk about. So uh, most ships fail hold inspections as a consequence of cargo residues, loose paint, rust scale being found. in in less accessible parts of the hold or as a result of previous cargo debris uh, falling from the hatch covers during the ballast voyage. Now in order to avoid such failures, make sure you are uh, 
take every opportunity to clean the upper parts of the holes and frames with suitable access equipment such as cherry pickers alternatively if it is fail it is safe to do so then uh, you may start stripping of the under deck beams before the start of discharge all right now many countries such as australia they have a very zero tolerance policy uh, you know they don't uh, allow any kind of uh, any kind of uh, failures to occur uh, any kind of contamination and they will fail the ship and the consequence of that failure is significant so the ships could be sanctioned as well sometimes or quarantined and uh, if a grain ship fails the survey and the load berth is not required for another ship then the ship may be allowed to stay alongside now this is more likely in small ports that have restricted wharf grain storage because only enough cargo for the current ship is held at the wharf now ports with larger storage will allow uh, will hold cargo for several ships and if the next ship in line is available then the failed ship has to leave the berth some ports have general purpose or lay by berths that can be used for cleaning holes shore labor does not usually have to be used to clean a grain ship that is alongside there are exceptions for example in melbourne if the ship is handy size handy max or panamax cherry pickers will be required there are some local ship cleaning companies in most ports finally i'll talk about hole cleaning the hole cleaning is the most time consuming and to minimize time spent on this task it is essential that the ship is suitably equipped equipment should include good quality brushes and brooms suitable scrapers uh, receptacles for removal of residues from the holes heavy duty hoses nozzles and jet sprays jet guns spray foam equipment pain protective and cleaning chemicals and where appropriate you may also have access to equipment such as a scaffold tower or a cherry picker now this requires a minimum pressure flow from the general service pumps and the air compressor with the dimensions of the deck pipes affecting the process so pressure drops should be calculated and simple and cost effective improvements such as increasing the diameter of water and compressed air couplings should be evaluated hot water cleaners although not commonly used are reported to make the wash down operation more effective and may also remove the need to use chemicals which can act as pollutants after the washing has finished so i will not go further into it I, in my future videos i may talk about individual cargoes uh, and how cargoes holds are prepared in regards to those individual cargoes but i need to have access to the pictures i want pictures and i like to use pictures because it helps you to understand what i'm talking about rather than me just uh, uh, talking about it uh, so it helps you to look at the pictures and understand things so i'll stop the video now don't want to make it longer than usual i hope you like the series of videos i hope you watch all the three videos and it helps you to prepare for your exams bye for now